it's like stand-up comedy show. <laughs> so I took the mic. <laughs> uh, before we start, all the those who will be talking, so mainly Roberto and Matas, please try to stay within the lights. So like here is already is good. Okay. <coughs> good morning. And this is the last session of this beautiful in news Vilnius forum. Uh, and we are now in a very special place, which is uh, like a gallery and art space, which is in a way um, an example, let's say, of uh, artistic and social innovation. <laughs> and therefore, uh, we invite uh, Roberto, uh, one of the uh, co-owners of this place, together with Lucia and as well as uh, many other mm, artists who are working here. So, Roberto, please welcome. Take your stage. <laughs> So it's a very easy audience today. No, I, I think I know everyone by name. So <laughs> it's, a, it's really very easy. I was worrying now building the slides in the car. So uh, it will be very short, I, I, I hope, uh, and so concise. And hopefully we get some um, questions or some trigger ideas because I should, I should if I do my job, I should make some uh, problematic comments. So, Mangut has invited me to talk about the um, existence of Ideas Block and this other project that we have artists. So you know, you've been here, you, uh, you know more or less what we are about, but for a moment allow me to say what we think about the place that we built. So, um, Ideas Block, um, I need the clicker. Ideas Block started in 2018 um, as a non-profit organization when we moved to Vilnius from Mexico. I am, uh, um, well, I didn't introduce myself for the documentation. So my name is Roberto Becerra, and I am originally from Mexico, now living in here with my wife in Lithuania. Um, I, uh, I have an engineering background and then uh, moved uh, towards arts and um, culture and arts and uh, specifically music. Uh, that was my intention after, after um, realizing that the industry, engineering industry wouldn't take me nowhere as in more philosophical aims and I would just be doing more harm than good, I thought. So um, I decided the arts and culture are the way to go and somehow I tried to steer my life into that. And um, while living in, um, working in engineering, uh, in audio industry and, and um, Living in Mexico with my wife, we decided that we needed to make a change, a radical change. And then we thought that um, Vilnius was a good space. Lucia has connections, or had. We thought she would have connections. And being a local, and, um, and we thought that um, it was not as overcrowded and done as, for example, places like Berlin, no? which was another option. We thought Berlin is very much a hot topic and everything, but we went there for a while and then we thought that it's, uh, it's done. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's as, as, as one artist says, there are more artists than people in Berlin. <laughs> so, so then we thought, it's, we went there and we saw it's, it's really true. And then we really, I mean, it's a good place, but we really didn't like the environment that much. In here, even though we are in the outskirts of Europe, it feels like when you are in here, you are in here. It doesn't feel like you're far away. So then, uh, and there's much more space to breathe. Uh, you know by experience more than what, what I am I'm talking about. So then we came here and Ideas Block uh, came to be. The idea was to have a, a, a culture space which would serve as our studio, our own studio to develop our practice, but also to have an open community where we could have a space where people would come we work and develop together, and we we try to fulfill those philosophical uh, urges of contribute to 
to, to culture or, or, or to do something that we are proud and, and happy doing. So then um, we probably were very naive and uh, very, very uh, maximalist in our ideas and we thought that we could do uh, a lot. I don't know what we were thinking really when we started because we started in a very small space which was around this area, 40 square meters or less, where we tried to do everything, ex art exhibitions, uh, discussions, um, uh, concerts, uh, workshops, uh, as well as having a cafe in there, and et cetera, et cetera. So the idea grew, and, and, and then uh, even though we had a very sm small space, we managed to connect with the local scene and the local community. So basically, uh, even though we were, uh, let's say, foolish at starting this, it really worked in our favor because we managed to insert ourselves in the in the scene and get to know people, and so here we are. So something I think I like of what we did. So so far, of course, many mistakes along the way, but this is the, the beginning of the of the idea, um, and so. The, the idea or the, the philosophy of this uh, ideas block concept was uh, somehow to bypass this, uh, this, uh, this closedness of the established uh, art world and, and, and other um, institutional bodies that we felt, as everyone feels and everyone uh, complains about, as we feel it all too heavy and all too rigid and all too snobbish, and all too, um, yeah, closed. So then we thought we will do our own. So then even if it's small, we will try to push, and this is what we want to do. If we fail, then we can say that we tried. And so this is, this is um, uh, uh, what this top-down disconnect uh, that I wrote in here uh, means, is that um, we figured that all this top-down approaches, governmental or institutional, somehow they also have this disconnect with what then is the grassroots uh, point of view. And then this is where the topic of this, uh, that Mantu uh, very, very, uh, very precisely pointed was this, uh, this topic of uh, the middle ground, where we found ourselves being. Because even though we started, we started as a, um, as a, as a, very small effort. We are still, uh, I consider ourselves to be a very small effort. Uh, we suddenly found ourselves collaborating with the biggest institutions in the, in the country. F I'm, and I'm talking <coughs> specifically about the Music Academy. So that was just our natural involvement with the, the, uh, with the, with the scene, with the people, the, the doers and the makers of the city. And then, um, we started thinking about our position, if we are really independent or if we, if we really should be collaborating or uh, separating ourselves from institutions because then there can be uh, this um, more uh, anarchist or let's say punk, um, I would say even childish uh, uh, mood of a purest bottom up uh, uh, approach where there is a specific rejection of established institutions, which I feel is uh, also foolish. And so this is why I, I put a question mark in the independent. Uh, are we to be independent really? Where does that lead us? And so what does it mean to be independent? Because then there we go into questions of funding and if we are dependent on funding, uh, then are we really uh, submitting ourselves to someone else's uh, agendas? or program, or, uh, or are we able to survive with that or without that funding? So all those questions uh, were in our heads. Also, there was this other question that uh, uh, really led me to start uh, my uh, deeper involvement with the Music Academy, which was that, um, fine, if we are to uh, contribute, if our objective is to contribute to culture or arts and through our building of, a, of an environment, of a framework or our own uh, practice, um, should, isn't it the best framework for that to contribute to the already established structures 
and it's namely institutions? Isn't it a futile effort to try to reinvent the wheel by ourselves? And so I feel like this is still an open question because uh, it could be seen that uh, if you, uh, like, with the, like with the activist movements and, and when people really wanna make change and they complain on Facebook, if you really wanna make a change, then you go and get involved in the, in the structures that are making changes, that have the capacity to make changes because you as, a, as an individual will only get so far. And so then we need to be part of this these larger structures that have, in a way, a life of their own, no? institutions. And so these questions were all the time in our, on our heads. So, so uh, a good answer to this is this middle ground, uh, is this middle ground uh, idea, which is, um, as you may know, uh, considered to be this, what it is, the, what, it, what it says in the name. The, the, there is this, this connection point in between the upper level, namely institutions, and the lower level, the grassroots initiatives. And there can be some exchange. Uh, there's, there's a win-win situation where the grassroots uh, initiatives or the underground or the lower or the smaller uh, players, the, the smaller entities, artists, um, they get to connect to to, to the well-established organizations to get funding or to get uh, infrastructure, to get knowledge, to get help, uh, the, 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 um, well, the benefit that comes from, from a larger, uh, let's say, team of people working or specialized people. And at the same time, the upper level institutional uh, individuals get to have a place to vent out uh, expressions, creative expressions that somehow or sometimes don't have a space in, uh, in such established big, uh, big structures. And so, um, of course, this, this I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the slides and, and now thinking about the, the point of uh, policies and funding and how does this interact or how does this um, really uh, affect the, the development or the activities or such middle ground? Because there, there is this problem of independence, whether this type of middle grounds can really exist or are they more volatile? Because um, there is uh, this, um, and I think I have in the next slide, well, there is a, there is a problem with um, uh, independent uh, organizations that they tend to appear and disappear without this uh, long-standing institutional support, meaning uh, funding. Uh, all these uh, lower or lesser organizations tend to suffer from financial uh, problems and our real estate problems as we have in here, and I will mention that briefly. Uh, and so, uh, so this is what we are now uh, understanding ourselves to be uh, as uh, this middle ground point where we can connect with the institutions and we can have this this uh, communication channel in between the underground. Because in, in here we have this approach where we have a, a very open policy to people coming to us and exhibiting, and we try to be as flexible as possible. Uh, at the same time trying to be as organized as possible and as legitimate and serious as possible and, and still connect to this, uh, for example, uh, um, uh, arts academy or music academy and so on, so we can uh, uh, bring a meaningful uh, content to ourselves firstly and then to, to, to the community around. And so, uh, of course, our case our, our, in our study case now is the Music Academy. So um, I didn't mention, but I also uh, work in Music Academy, of course everyone knows here <laughs> at least. Um, uh, and so I spend my time in between these two spaces. Luckily it's uh, a five minute walk. It's in fact eight minutes walk. And so for me it's, uh, it's, it's, it's completely convenient. Um, and, and this has developed into a space where we where we host uh, uh, so much content from uh, at least from the from the musical side, 
coming from music academy and from the uh, artistic side or from the uh, from the arts academy but also from other places not only from these uh, established institutions um, of course the middle ground is not without issues and i already mentioned uh, this uh, this purest attitude of uh, there can be uh, and we have experienced that with members of our community that uh, there is a certain reluctancy to uh, have this more established or institutionalized mindset uh, because of their, 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 their I, I feel they are simply philosophical, uh, fundamental philosophical difference on, on our approach to, to, to doing things. And so, but also there could be the issues of dependence. We, if, and then we have seen that uh, people that are dependent on funding then might get caught up in projects or in program uh, that they are not really um, establishing themselves. And so in a, in a way you could say that is a bit of a um, sellout. But uh, the, the opposite side of that would be uh, uh, contempt. No? Uh, well, in, si in fact, it's, 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 it's not the opposite. It's, it's so the, 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 let's say the, the, the ossification of that would be contempt. No? So uh, uh, if, if there is complete dependence, so then there will be contempt and there will be no, no more uh, uh, seek for uh, the expression of uh, the, the culture that we want to see uh, around us. Um, as I mentioned, there is of course issues uh, with the financial uh, um, topics as everywhere else. Uh, but in, in an independent effort, it's very noticeable, and uh, you have seen everywhere these efforts, uh, projects, organizations that come and go. And you will always see this. Uh, we participated some years ago in an um, in, in a, uh, art fair, independent art fair in um, Stockholm, a supermarket. And this topic is, is, is probably central to, to everyone's discussions this financial difficulties and how uh, is everyone asking each other, how are you making ends meet? Oh, we have a bar, or oh, we have tickets, we have funding, or, or we, have donor, we have donors, or, um, or we rent spaces. And so this is uh, everyone's um, everyday struggle, of course. And finally, uh, in our very specific case, but I think it's also widespread, uh, it's, there is a public space or locations, or I would even say real estate issues, um, because most of the time, sm small independent spaces take on cheap locations. And very often they are cheap be before they get gentrified and people get kicked out, or before they are, they are turned into something else and demolished, for example. In the case of this location, now we are in this, um, now we are in this um, X Physics Institute. And as you see, the building is, is quite, quite unique. Uh, but it's also in disarray, so it's in, it's, it's in, it's in decay, and the government decided that uh, the building would be demolished, and uh, so we uh, have basically one more year of life in here, which is very unfortunate because uh, it was not communicated to us when we first took the place. We asked explicitly the question, are there plans to sell, demolish, or otherwise do something with this property that would kick us out? And they said, no, no, don't, don't worry about this. Everything is good. And so we moved in, and uh, soon after, uh, we, we saw on the news that there was uh, such plan. Uh, not even from our landlord, uh, so which is a as an arm of the government. And so uh, even though they knowingly told us that there was uh, no plans for that. Of course, this project has, had been on the table for years and it was known to everyone it's a big project you go to the our landlord uh, website and it's it's the front page of their website so this is something that everyone knew but uh, this is a uh, more of that uh, struggle we are uh, happy that this place is that it exists and uh, and then we take this also as a, on a positive note as, uh, the silver liner is that we we uh, will have a, an excuse to move forward and do different. 
And so what this has become now, uh, this uh, um, our initial organization, Ideas Block, now is Ideas Block Compressorine, um, because the, this place used to be a compressor room for uh, the Physics Institute. There used to be tanks in here for compress compressing helium, as I understand, and so hence the word Compressorine, which is compressor room in, in Lithuania. And so now we have, you saw the gallery space, we have art exhibitions, concerts, discussions, workshops. Um, artist residencies, people come here to do electronic work, ceramics, um, uh, music, music concerts, uh, experimental arts and, and, uh, and projects of all kinds. Uh, we have a strong focus, of course, in the art gallery. You saw the space, which is a, a, a very interesting space, and on music. And on music, we have been supported uh, very much by Music Academy, and also by Matthias that is in here with, uh, with, the, with the sound system that we have, which is very unique and is, uh, and is um, as I see, st as I think still, uh, the, one, the, the, the only one of its kind as an open space, as a venue in at least Baltic states, if not also Northern Europe. And so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that is the case still. And so, um, uh, Okay, so this is where we are now with these activities. This is our this is our presence. Uh, of course, we are very much underground still. Our audience is small, uh, so we are not uh, we, we don't have bigger audience. But but I think we have. I mean, I absolutely love the content that we have here. We have. Uh, if I if I was a visitor in here and I didn't I was not involved in this, I would be coming here all the time to the events. Right. But this is my very biased opinion. Um, and then there is this other point in the conversation today, which is uh, a platform that we created called Artis, um, coming from a few years back when we had the, the smaller space and we were curating exhibitions, concerts, and, and so on. And we found ourselves repeating artists. There were... Um, there were uh, musicians or exhibitions, uh, art, uh, visual artists that uh, started to come again and we would exhibit them twice. Uh, and we, we thought that we ran out of the people around. And so we thought we needed to invite someone else and where do we find this? If we are not ours, if we are here new, we came just from Mexico and we were not completely connected to everyone. How, uh, how, how on earth are we gonna find about the scene in Poland or in, uh, I don't know, Latvia, other than uh, a lengthy process of getting involved and so on. And so then we found that there is an old website from a very, uh, mm, let's say, important but also underground uh, mover and shaker of the city, Arma Agarta, who had a, um, has a very hidden website in his page in his website, which you cannot actually find through the links in his website. You somehow need a link. I don't know how I got this link, but this link was a, pay, a map uh, where he uh, had uh, handwritten, not handwritten, but had hand input the um, venues of experimental music across Europe. And that took him years. He, he traveled and he played everywhere and then he would connect and he would put that in his Google map and, and then uh, uh, th this was a, a, an absolute uh, wonderful tool. So we saw it and people came to us to play in our small space from different places of Europe because they found us on our Armas map. And I thought, wow, this is, this is incredible. And this is also, this is uh, so uh, unknown and it's also so uh, underdeveloped, not that our project is developed in any, in any kind, but I thought that it has like, so much potential. That, and then I, I, I thought, I had this idea, and then this came to be, and then it was just like, okay, I need to do something like this, or like blatantly copy it. Or, and so we came up with this idea of making artists, which is basically, a, 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 as, as someone said in the very beginning, a, a, Kind of Tinder for artists, or uh, or uh, or uh, how you know like a house search, like a Ruodas, or like some some real estate search, but for artists. But how we how we formally call it is a map-based 
cultural entities catalog. No, this is completely a, a, a bad name for PR, but um, but you get the idea. It's a map with artists, uh, with artists and or cultural entities. And by cultural entities, I mean artists, institutions, organizations, professionals, venues, so that uh, we could um, have a, a map that could be self-curated, so that there is no one single person. Uh, uh, inserting information, which would be a painstaking process and also very lengthy and very, maybe very inefficient, but more of a social network, no? Of course, there is enough social networks and then there's, there was this talk of why would we do this? There is Facebook and are we gonna compete with Facebook? That's stupid. And so then we thought that uh, there has to be enough uh, use for this, no? Uh, and so we, we really thought that tools like Facebook or Google, they don't really uh, filter out the content that you want. If you want to look for artists only that do, uh, that combine sculpture with uh, spatial audio, then you will not find it in, 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 in and, that, and that live in Berlin. So then I feel like this, this degree of granularity is very difficult also for, for events and you've seen the struggle in Facebook and Google and Google. And so then, um, so we thought that we could do this and I have like a soft uh, uh, wall, like a soft uh, uh, privacy, in which uh, the curation would be done by, by people registering themselves only through invitation. But the invitation is a very soft wall that other members can uh, issue an invitation. So if I have a profile, I can invite, I issue an invitation, and I invite someone, that someone can issue invitations. And so in a way, it could ensure that there's only real cultural entities in it, no? And so, um, of course, that, that is, is still growing and it really needs much more attention. We developed it, we got some funding to, to create this, thanks to Kulturo uh, Stariva, Culture Ministry from, from, from Vilnius, from Lithuania. Um, but it needs much more work. Uh, and as everyone else, we find ourselves having too much in our plate and then we have to take care of this and work in Music Academy and still, uh, I had to fix uh, a bug that I found in the platform for today's presentation because I thought that I would show it live, but in the end I didn't. I'm glad I fixed the bug anyway. And so, um, and by the name, the, by, by the way, the name Artis is, um, comes from uh, art and lattice, so it's like an art lattice. Uh, it's, you know, picking names is, it was probably the most painful part of this. Um, and and now it's uh, so it's it's a bit a bit steady. I mean, uh, not to say stagnant, but uh, it's uh, it's um, uh, from time to time I get emails from people requesting an invitation, and uh, we 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 uh, accept them. And in fact, I will send emails to more people, including people that are here now. And the current state of this is that um, through Music Academy now we are using this database as an engine for the uh, European Chamber Music Association uh, switchboard, which is basically the same, uh, a map-based uh, profile database of chamber music uh, ensembles across Europe. And so we use this engine, and so we have a, a new interface for it, and so now there will be, it will be fed with this, uh, this new uh, ensembles across Europe. Uh, and so we hope to, to have this um, model more and to try to use this as a, as a, as a let's say, a stepping stone or, 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 as, a, or as an engine for other, other projects. Now we have some other projects uh, uh, at the door with the Music Academy, but uh, I think it's better if I leave it at that until they are actually born. And, and I think that's that, because uh, my time was 45 minutes, and I did 43 without looking at the clock. Um, but it would be interesting to see if, uh, can there be questions uh, or comments, critiques? Yes, yes. Uh, but there will be, there will be, 
Thank you so much. I'm just curious if your art is, is limited to uh, Lithuania or Vilnius, or if it's uh, also all of Europe, or the world, or universe? Yeah, so, so in the same maximalist spirit, we, tried to, we, we made it so that it would be uh, open, so, so, so no, no, no limits. So we have, we have uh, people registered from Australia, from Mexico, Germany, well, uh, Europe, and, and US, and uh, I don't remember now, but uh, yeah. Yeah, just a question about uh, the future of this place. Uh, how, what are your plans since this is going to be demolished in one year? I'm assuming that you're looking for a new space, or and what are the, if so, what are your criteria for a new space? So criteria are um, bigger, better, cheaper, <laughs> uh, more in the center. Uh, but of course, this is impossible, and so we think that uh, we definitely would have uh, uh, um, an option to not be in the city. Now we thought that uh, we can, to make it more permanent, we could find something um, on the countryside, for example, and have it more as um, more specialized uh, um, project space venue. Uh, artist uh, in residency type of space in the countryside where we could invite people to have residencies or to have um, more focused events uh, for festivals for example or, or or something like this this is a dream still that we are we are we are uh, we are thinking about I think that the, the situation uh, in Vilnius is uh, is uh, is getting a bit uh, harder uh, because of the spaces and prices. And so then uh, we figured that uh, we, as a life plan, we could uh, have it somewhere else in the countryside, and and then um, and, and 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 follow that model. Uh, we've seen a few of those uh, type of spaces, and we think it it could work. I think there is, uh, for example, this um, very interesting project uh, uh, to happen in uh, Latvia, in, uh, near Riga. Right, with this in this manner that is specialized in in, in special audio, yes, in ambisonics. Well, not necessarily ambisonics, but special audio. And so, yeah, something like this is in our mind. Of course, we need to we need to still we are on the we are on the on the look. But uh, yeah, that's that's the the future. Thank you, super interesting presentation. I was thinking about future models for <clears throat> your space. I was thinking in a model like uh, maybe an institution that you know, it's called Angar in Barcelona. Angar is a visual art center and <clears throat> it had an independent spirit and they finally decided to partner uh, with, the, with the municipality and the municipality created a project that uh, help other institutions to, to, to have a more uh, continuous activity. And, and the project was called Creative Factories in the city for each, each sector. And, and I was thinking that it, it is a very good uh, example because the institution put the space, that it's something very important, but uh, the, the other partner, the, this independent institution, put the content in, in the space. Uh, is it possible this kind of partnership in, in Lithuania? Are you exploring this possibility? I think at this point, uh, even and Mantotas has better uh, answers about the possibilities of institutions and, uh, uh, and um, organizations in, in, in Lithuania. Um, we we've been to uh, Angar. Uh, we or I don't remember if we've been or we tried to go when our uh, when we were in Barcelona, to, uh, looking precisely for this type of spaces and models. And so, yes, I've I've thought about this type of uh, dynamic in which uh, there can be a space 
or let's say physical space or, or, or even an organization that has already an infrastructure and that can combine or somehow merge or um, go into, into some symbiotic relationship with, uh, with uh, uh, a lesser organization, for example, ours. I, I don't know what the possibilities are in here in that respect. Uh, uh, just uh, from the top of my head, I, can, I would say that uh, because the scene in here is small, uh, Vilnius, Lithuania is small in general, um, the established organizations are less, so there's fewer of them. And I feel like there's already, everything that is working is working already very well. And so uh, when thinking about whether some of these organizations would need the content or the input from something like this, but, uh, but maybe I'm completely mistaken in that. So now don't take my word for it. I think. I think that this is a, an interesting model. I was thinking about this uh, with uh, Lucia, my wife, from time ago. What can be for us in the future? And one of them could be what the experience that we have uh, gained in here, the content and so on, we could probably, yes, combine or work with uh, established organization and then maybe have space that they provide. And then we have this, uh, uh, this dynamic already with us and then take it there. Um, but I cannot think of which organization now. There is, because I, if I think of something, I immediately think about, for example, the Contemporary Art Center, which is a big established organization with a very strong program. And then uh, very, uh, so they have established leadership and, and et cetera. Um, other than that, um, right now, I don't think of other things. But yeah, I, I think I if, if I understood you, like that. This is a, a very interesting idea also. If anything else, thank you. Thank you, Roberto. Uh, of course, I've been in, in the events here uh, myself, <laughs> not a single time. And I think it's it's really great just to observe how 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 in, let's say people who are more institutionalized and like people who are artists, independent people, and also people with this kind of punk approach when they mix together, you know, and what kind of ideas comes out from that. I think it's beautiful, extremely important to have this kind of spaces and places also for students and for teachers sometimes as well. <laughs> okay, now I invite another presenter today. Mm, who is both institutionalized and not, <laughs> who is our doctoral student and researcher, as well as a very important player in Lithuanian, like uh, electronic free impro scene. So welcome, Matas. Yeah, so um, hello, ev everyone. Uh, thank you, Mantotas. Thank you, Inmuse uh, team. And uh, thank you, of course, Lucia and, and Roberto, for having this place. It is a great honor to be here. It was really fun to play with the guys yesterday. Uh, and uh, I don't think I'm going to tell so s such an interesting story as Roberto did. I'm just going to present my, uh, let's say, way of thinking and uh, my research. Let's say part of my research. Uh, so yeah, so hello, my name is Mata Samulonis. I'm an improviser. Uh, a composer, producer, and a candidate uh, for doctor degree here in Lithuania, and my <laughs> main main focus for uh, for researching is improvised or experimental music. And I started as a uh, saxophone player, jazz saxophone player, and on on the, my artistic way, I, I adapted myself. And now you cannot see a saxophone here; you can see modular synthesizers and, and interfaces and all the stuff. But saxophone is still inside me. But I'm not going to talk about that uh, maybe too 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 much. So um, I hope that after this 30 minutes, this saying of decoding performance, my topic will mean something to you or mean what I want to say. So let's get right in. Yeah, so my uh, topic, my thesis uh, is called encoding and or decoding of improvised music. And uh, I'm not going to present my whole research thingies, but uh, just maybe some crucial points uh, at, the, 
at this research. So uh, if we tr translate this encoding the coding idea into human the speech, this is uh, like a transfer of the idea from one consciousness to another and using some kind of medium, some kind of ob object which uh, uh, helps to uh, uh, like to have this symmetry of codes and as, as less distortion as possible. I'll speak about that later too. Uh, as an improviser and slash composer, I always try to find balance between chaos and control because I think it is the, the sweet spot for improvising and, well, I cannot say for all of the music, but uh, as an improviser, I can assure you that it is a really nice uh, spot to be, to be in. Although uh, that's why maybe academic, uh, mm, academics cannot uh, uh, analyze this music too much or conceptualize so I'm not trying to do that either I'm not trying to conceptualize whole improvisation thing uh, I'm just trying to find a way of logical thinking and be able to analyze things I do and other people does uh, so there's maybe two main points in my research is the idea of form in improvisation uh, and attentive listening and today I'm going to just present the bird's eye view of my research and maybe dig in a little bit into the idea of form and musical space. Uh, yeah. So the main encoding decoding uh, principle came from uh, Stuart Hall. Uh, there's his uh, so he's a social was a social activist, political activist, and a theorist, and he was one of the founding figures of Birmingham Cultural Studies. Uh, studies. Uh, so his work uh, called encoding decoding is the like the the spirit of my uh, of my research uh, so what he what he says of course he's not talking about music he's talking about media about advertising about uh, marketing and all the stuff about political propagandas uh, so he's criticizing this model of linear thinking while creating a message uh, like a creator of a message message itself as an object and a receiver uh, he gives his uh, new way of thinking about delivering a message. And what I want to do, uh, I want to uh, say that music is kind of same or similar to this kind of process. So that's what Stord Hall says. There are four steps uh, in this process. Production, circulation, distribution or consumption, and reproduction. I'll read a little citation from Stord himself. So he said, to think of this process in terms of a structure produced and sustained through the articulation of linked but distinctive moments. So I want to emphasize this, uh, this part of linked but distinctive moments. So he, what he's saying that uh, there's no like three different steps uh, uh, going from the beginning to the ending. These whole steps are this kind of quantum soup of, of elements and they are all connected to each other. And maybe I'll just present what he says about, uh, what he means by, this, by these steps. So the production is a stage of a message construction, of course, based on the technical infrastructure of the type of media used, personal, professional experience, and assumptions about the future audience. I think you can say the same about musical performance or composition, is it fixed media or no? Uh, circulation is the phase uh, which reflects how an individual perceives some kind of certain symbols. So in, in music, in, in art, uh, uh, some misconceptions or misunderstandings could be really cool and artistic in political arena. <laughs> it's kind of kind of easy to, to get lost. Uh, yeah, so next one is uh, consumption or distribution. So it's the presentation of encoded message, so created idea into some kind of ob object. Uh, in the form of meaningful discourse, Stord Hall himself, uh, this uh, term meaningful discourse puts in the it it uh, italics uh, just to emphasize that it is really important to, uh, to do it in a meaningful discourse and he speaks a lot uh, about this, what is meaningful discourse and what his, uh, his thoughts may be summarized to is that this, uh, this requires the activity of the individuals who decode the message. So the creator and the listener should somehow be in sync to be uh, to, for, for the idea to be meaning, a meaningful discourse. I'll show you an example which I think uh, really reflects on this, on this little term. Uh, and so the last step is reproduction, the stage during the, uh, which the individual who has already received the message and decoded it through his or her own empirical prism and reacts on one way or the other. 
Yeah, so that's what Stuart Hall says about the uh, media construction and message construction. And now I want to jump into the space of music. And um, I'll try to be as disconnected from emotions as possible, but uh, I think uh, it's a bit impossible. But uh, yeah, so what you're going to hear, uh, maybe you, you remember, of course, you may, may remember the tragic events in 2020 with George Floyd, the, man, the black man who was strangled to death uh, uh, in public. So here you will hear the uh, saxophone player. He's not uh, like a famous saxophone saxophonist. He's, uh, his name is Scott Robinson. He did this video I'm going to show you on June 6. And what does he do? He plays uh, a piece which is called 8 minutes 46 seconds. It's the exact time in which uh, George Floyd uh, passed away. And what he does is, is an interesting uh, circular breathing or chain breathing technique, which is done on uh, woodwinds and, and, uh, and brass. It is uh, a technique, an uh, extended technique, uh, where you can con uh, blow a continuous airstream for long, long, long periods of time. Uh, that's uh, happening by uh, pressuring uh, air into your cheeks and when you uh, push the air from your cheeks you breathe, breathe in through your nose and uh, uh, that process is why it's called circular but it's really really physical and after sometimes it, it gets really hard because you have to calculate the air you are coming into you and coming out of you uh, and if you are playing a low instrument and here Scott is playing a baritone saxophone it's getting even even harder so I'm not gonna play the whole nine minutes piece you can listen that on YouTube I'll uh, just ask the team to, to skip into some points so what I'm going to show you is the beginning what he starting the middle where he changes uh, the note into a lower one to make it even harder uh, and the end where he struggles the most so I'll ask the team to, to skip and just from uh, before before the video starts I want to read his message uh, in the description of, of this video um, I doubt I'm the last musician and maybe not the first who will want to create a musical piece for 8 minutes and 46 seconds duration the exact length of time it took for a man's life's, uh, life to ebb away on that horrifying video we have all seen in the news. After I first saw some of that future, uh, footage, I wept trying to describe it to my wife. I was extremely disturbed but by what I saw. Soon after that, the protests began and they have continued. When I finally heard on the news astonishing amount of time that actually elapsed while that man and many bystanders pleaded in vain for his life, uh, I knew I had to memorize the number somehow. How long is 8 minutes and 46 seconds? Very late last night, I dressed in black and went out to my lab to make this video. It was done in one take. All of the flaws and the struggles you hear should be considered, considered as part of the piece. It was not fun to make and it is probably no, no more fun to listen to, nor should it be. And in the end, he just wants to add, I've never done ev anything like this before and I wasn't sure I could get through it. But by the end, I was shaking and some desperation was starting to kick in. Uh, there, but there came a moment when my timer uh, showed one minute remaining. That I realized I'm, I was going to make it. Sadly, that moment never came to George Floyd. Let's listen to the piece.
Yeah, so you can see that his cheeks are moving and he's breathing while playing. We can skip to the fourth minute in the middle. Mm -hmm, thanks. Hope this won't crash. <laughs> Maybe let it be. <laughs> I'll just go further. Let's go further, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> OK, so maybe if you want to find this uh, video on YouTube, it is called 8 minutes 46 seconds. It is made by Scott Robinson. I can send you the link if you want. So what's, what is happening in the video? I wanted to show you the middle part because he's still holding the same note. And you can hear the difference in timbre. You can hear the upper harmonics coming out. Uh, the tuning is a bit uh, going up and a bit off. And you can feel that, re that the man is really stressed and pushing the sound as much as possible. And in the end, you can like easily physically see that he's like <laughs> fighting for this last seconds so really recommend you to to look at this uh, at this video it's kind of catharsis what was catharsis for me i i hope you haven't seen it yet um so yeah so let's go i i wanted to show this video in a in a like idea to show the meaningful discourse example in, in musical context so i hope uh, you all know this this tragic event and uh, let's say it was put in a uh, meaningful discourse way. So what you see here in this slide, uh, this is the main scheme I made for the whole encoding and decoding uh, performance. Of course, I'm a uh, I'm a performer and I focus on decoding, on doing music on the stage live. But if I want to understand that, I I think I have to somehow frame myself into this this process and and play by by the rules I made myself. So I'm going to explain what these. Uh, uh, terms actually mean. So there's three primal, uh, uh, primary uh, like uh, concepts. So there are active actors, passive actors, and processes. There are three active actors: creator, performer, and consumer. Uh, of course, one person can be all of three, uh, or just there can be, of course, a lot of. My, uh, I myself am a creator and a performer, and sometimes a consumer of the same the, of the same object. So they can mix. There are passive actors, which I want to elaborate a bit, a bit more. So the primal idea, uh, this is the term I thought would fit the best what I wanted to express by, by saying that uh, if you want to improvise, you have to have a really, really clear material or some kind of idea. It can be like uh, not physical. It, it, sh it should not maybe sometimes be uh, notes or, or tempo or anything, but it should be as compressed as possible for the next steps to happen uh, as good as possible. Uh, so what do I call uh, primal, uh, primal ideas? Sorry. <laughs> um, a bit uh, mixed up in the <laughs> in the papers. Um, yeah, so it's a simple idea on which basis the algorithm is developed. A fundamental, but at the same time, the least objective term. Why it is objective? Because it is in the eyes of the particular creator is a pure and indivisible idea. Uh, and the re origin of which can be any, from uh, feeling to theoretical concept, from arts to sciences, from empirical to metaphysical experience. So it's quite... Uh, abstract but it's also one of the main and fundamental things in my research the primal idea and the finding and purification of one the code is the term which reflects uh, what stored hall says about the uh, uh, the consumption stage uh, and uh, uh, the circulation stage sorry and uh, i think for people here uh, from uh, technologies and from ai perspective it's more uh, more common word to 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 name this thing a medium is uh, like a tool to do something, like uh, in uh, Scott Robinson's case, uh, the medium was this circular breathing technique uh, and baritone saxophone. 
uh, the primal idea was this uh, political concept, of course. The algorithm I call this uh, I called all the uh, available materials for musicians before they play an algorithm. It could be notes, it could be verbally uh, said things, it could be like anything. So I call this uh, the uh, rules of this game, the rules of improvisation, the, the rules of performance. Artistic product is, of course, what we get here on the stage. And the final idea is the idea or something which, which happens in the consumer's mind. And in a perfect world, uh, the primal idea and the final idea should be the same. But, uh, of course, art is an alternative universe and we can destroy things and uh, don't get hurt <laughs> sometimes, hopefully. Uh, so some, sometimes when the codes are asymmetrical and the primal idea is not the same as the final idea, you can really find some really interesting, cool artistic choices and influences. Uh, but you still, I think, you have to name it and you have to say to yourself and, and to, to the others that, well, it didn't match for, for that time or the other. And there are some processes. There's a purification process, which I'll maybe explain while showing the, the scheme. Uh, and coding uh, process uh, of the first level. So I'll maybe I'll show you ex uh, uh, like the processes in the in the later scheme. Yeah. So first level, second level. Yeah. So here you can see the the, the scheme which I made. Um, so there's an idea pool which uh, there are um, uh, infinite number of, of ideas and let's. Uh, just break down the Scott Robinson's example and try to fit all the things in the, into the, the scheme. So the primal idea was uh, George Floyd's uh, death, tra tragical death, of course. Uh, I think in this case it doesn't need too much purification. I, al although I think it was done after the creating of, uh, after the thinking of primal idea because one has to think which mediums uh, you should use. Should you use circular breathing or any other things? Uh, the algorithm, the notes itself, is quite simple. Play long note for long period of time. Uh, artistic product is uh, what we can see in the YouTube link, and uh, of course, it really matters when you see the uh, the picture and not only hear uh, the sound. And the final idea is this little silence, which you get when you when the video is finished. You sit just for a few seconds in silence. So, I think that's the final idea. Uh, yeah. So. As I said in the beginning, I don't want to conceptualize the whole improvisation uh, process into this one scheme. It is just made for me, for my research, and I can, just for myself, I can fit any kind of performance or any kind of uh, concept into this scheme. And uh, now I'll, I'm going to a practical side for, for, for a little bit, and I'm going to play you one of the techniques techniques that I'm I'm using for, for some time. So there's uh, Milton Mermakidis, uh, theoretical concept of musical space, of, of space uh, of form in improvisation. So he does this analysis of 3D space uh, where there are three parameters. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> so this reflects the solo of John Coltrane's uh, Love Supreme first part acknowledgement uh, solo. Uh, if you have heard the solo, you can already see that uh, it's, it's not the whole solo analyzed, but some part of it, but it really reflects the way it sounds. Maybe it doesn't reflect the way Coltrane was thinking, but uh, it really makes sense uh, in this logical way. So there are three axes, uh, metric placement, rhythmic separation, and chromatic dis uh, transposition. And by limiting and varying these uh, parameters, John Coltrane is able to create some elaborate solos from quite an easy easy material and uh, it's quite an, it was quite an interesting uh, uh, thing for me to to read uh, and uh, I took this this idea of, of musical space concept and tried to do my little experiments with with that of course in music there are a lot of a lot more parameters than 3d uh, I think we are playing in some kind of quantum space and listening in this quantum space though I cannot uh, paint it or, <laughs> or talk about it. Uh, so I think this principle is really nice when you try to uh, 
just uh, learn the way of improvisation, uh, lear learn the way of uh, listening to improvis improvised music. And I think uh, at the at the end of my research, I, I would be able to somehow attract more people into improvised music and say that it is not crazy people doing uh, drunk stuff. It's uh, it could be uh, like structural, logical, interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm going to play a little piece for you, like uh, I don't know, let's say five minutes piece. Okay, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So I'll have this 3D dimension, sorry, uh, of textual density, tone presence, and pulse stability, and I'll go from point A to point B. Uh, of course, the the way of, of my playing will not be a straight line. It's I think it's impossible and it's uh, un uncreative, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, and maybe I'll just explain for a bit what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use this modular, little modular system from, from Berger, Neutron. Uh, I've made a little patch like a self-generating or other known as Krell patch, which generates sounds by himself. I don't have to put the notes inside and, and play. Uh, play with MIDI keyboard, uh, but I control the, uh, let's say the, uh, the spaces between the notes going to be played or not going to be played. I'm controlling, of course, the textual density. I'm I'm controlling the tonal presence. Uh, yeah, and I will try to be as, uh, I will try to play as in straight line as possible. But uh, things happen, and let's see what will happen now.
thank you everyone uh thank you for this amazing event and uh we'll hope you we'll hope to see you soon <laughs> For the last time, I have to ask if there are any questions. <laughs> well, no questions. All oh, okay. Roberto, could you come? After uh, um, thinking so much about your process, you, I mean, you yourself thinking too much, uh, not too much, but so much about your process. Uh, sorry. sorry. Um, uh, do you feel like when, once you started making sense of it, you realized that you were already doing this and feeling this and you just crystallized those ideas? Yeah, so exactly. Uh, maybe I just want to get back to this little scheme I, I showed you before. I draw these lines and made them brown <laughs> to see you, to, to be more clearly. The possibilities of purification of the primal idea and the pur purification itself, I think it's a really like a huge process to do. And I think every everyone should do it, whether they are composers, improvisers, or you you have to grow and change your your thinking. And that's that's the way of yeah purification. If I answered your question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. It was after having seen you play a few times and played with you also yesterday uh, and discussed things with you previously. It was really nice to hear about your sort of theory of, of the actual process. I wonder, have you published this on the way, uh, sort of? Do you also, have you done articles on the way towards the final PhD? Can we read about it or re reference it in some way? Yes, yeah, so that's a good and hard question. I have already already the material made, uh, but I haven't published yet. So I think the first article is going to to be published like this year. I hope so. Uh, it's about uh, form and about human memory as a creative canvas, uh, because I think that music is nothing else that uh, rhythm, pitch, and timbre projection on on time, and time is understood by memory. So so that will be the article, the, my first article, and the second one. Uh, will be, I think, about the att attentive listening in the chamber ensemble of electronic music. Where uh, for submission, I've, I think the first one will be our set praxis. This is uh, our local uh, local jour academic journal, and uh, later we will see maybe some bigger ones. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Great, thank you. Well, it has been very nice events, I think. Well, I'm a bit biased, <laughs> probably. <laughs> but nevertheless, also from the people and uh, listeners and those who listened online, and there have been some uh, reflections that, you know, it's interesting and inspiring. Also interesting and inspiring also having all these discussions around the forum. Uh, it's hard to wrap it up maybe in words, however, we thought that it would be nice to wrap it up in an um, artistic way. So maybe, Florian, you could come up here as well. And so we will officially finish the forum and uh, tell also what is the last finishing touch. <laughs> thank you for having me. and. Uh also, big thank you to the organizer. I think it was great because, not only because I personally learned a lot of things, but most importantly, the fact that I, I met six or seven speakers that they were speakers in the beginning and now they became my friend. Hopefully, it's, the, it's, it's mutual. And uh, um, I think it's like Manto says uh, this idea of like, trying to do something experimental to reflect in a um, visual art vocabulary. Um, an experience that uh, is very assumed. Um, so it's like, just to quote uh, Mantas, it's like I just, in, in, in this presentation, was very interesting because I found myself in this like hot spot 
as he says, an improv improvisation is like, where is this balance between chaos and uh, balance, right? So I, I think it's like we use our own thoughts, our own experience, our professional experience, our like life experience to express what we feel about things in general. I'm, I'm cold, that's why my voice is shaking. So it's like, I think this exhibition is just an extension of my presentation and also to prove a point. It's a little bit what you guys did last night with like the improvisation. It's kind of was the same thing here, right? And, and again, I don't want to use too much Platon as an example. Uh, it's obviously a part of my academic background and it's like what I did is like I basically took my camera for about like six hours uh, during the two days. Uh, it was a lot of rain and it was, like, it was very challenging to shoot. And it's a process of like an amnesis coding Platon. Basically, I'm just trying to remind people things that they already knew, right? So I was having a nice conversation with Lucia today. Thank you, Lucia and Roberto as well for like having me here. It was a great pleasure and honor at the same time. And I was talking to her, I was saying, like, you know, when you live in a town, you're passing by so many amazing things. And, you know, sometimes because you're like caught into your quotidian struggles or work and challenges, you don't pay attention to things, right? It's like taking the bus, right? It's like sometimes you're on the left side, sometimes on the right side. But, you know, time passes, and it's like things are changing. So if you pay attention, you actually have this like variety of lenses to see through the reality that is like continuous changing. So I am exposed for the first time to this event and also to the city. And, and I try to have my own reflection. Uh, and I use my camera and hopefully the photos will, uh, will cut my talk and <laughs> tell more, right? So thank you again for having me and hopefully you're gonna enjoy the exhibition. Thank you. So those who are here live, uh, feel free to hang around and enjoy the exhibition. And also there is this uh, interactive part where you can, in the end, after everybody has seen everything, can actually take part of it with you back home. As, as much as we will be taking part back home, uh, the conversations, thoughts, and inspirations we have all received here. So let me declare it in Muse Forum Vilnius 2023 officially closed. Thank you very much for the partners from the Lithuanian National Opera and Ballet Theater, from my institution, Lithuanian Academy of Music and Theater, for all the support of Vilnius City, uh, which is celebrating the 700 years anniversary from Nord Plus program, as well from Lithuanian Council for Culture for making all this uh, happen and hopefully see you some next years when we continue to talk about innovation in the arts. Bye. <laughs>